Welcome back, everyone, to another one of Rome's things. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2023. I want to start the year off with my very first office and desk setup video. I hope you enjoy it. Also, please hit that like, subscribe, and notifications buttons. Hit me up with a comment as well. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your suggestions. Anyways, my 2023 budget office and desk setup. Enjoy. Before and during the pandemic, my wife and I shared the den and our daughter used the guest room as her virtual classroom. With my wife back in the office full time and our daughter back in the classroom, I have the den all to myself now. Our son also moved out to college and is living in the dorms now, so his room is now storage. I made the spare bedroom into my wife's Zen workspace, so if she does need to work at home, she has a nice place to be productive and relax. She loves it and is happy, so that makes me happy. This is not a complete makeover. I am reusing some existing furniture, which is why this is more of a budget setup and not a dream setup. So after several iterations of my desk setup and hours of moving stuff around, I finally feel I have a setup worth making a video for. The space itself is a pretty good size. It measures 12 feet by 12 feet. The windows bring in some natural light, and it's nice to just sip my coffee and enjoy the view. I just wish it was more of a view. The first thing you may notice is how the space is split into black and white, light and dark. I think it reflects how I view life as a balancing act sometimes. On the dark side, I have a desk where I do most of my unboxing videos, product shots, and prep for whatever project I'm working on. I have my older 15-inch MacBook Pro, which I mostly use for browsing, research, and some writing now. This 15-inch portable monitor I picked up from Amazon is great. It comes with a soft case that acts as a stand. I use it a lot as a video monitor. It's light and small enough to mount on a tripod using an iPad clip mount. It's important to have enough storage space to keep things tidy, and these drawers I got from Amazon do a great job. They're budget friendly and look pretty good. The big black thing is where I keep my valuables safe and secure. It's huge, heavy, and bolted to the floor, so it's not going anywhere. I've been using Apple products for quite some time now, and I like to keep some of them on display. Like this, my first power book from 2003. When I'm not using my iPhone 13 Pro, I'm shooting photos and videos with the Nikon D5200. It's an older camera, but meets my needs for now. It doesn't shoot in 4K, however. I would like to eventually upgrade to a mirrorless setup in the near future. We do have a dog, and I do have allergies. So, to help clean the air, I picked up this air purifier from Amazon. It's whisper quiet, but strong enough to clean a room of this size. Moving over to the white and lighter side of things, this is where I do the bulk of my work. Coding, video editing, music production, design, it's all done here. The desk is an Ergomore sit-stand desk frame with the Han Mod work surface top. The top measures 66 inches wide and 30 inches deep. It's a really good size for me. I went with a silver frame and a white top for a more modern look and feel. I was thinking about doing a butcher block top, but decided the white was better for the overall aesthetic of this side of the room. I'm actually thinking of painting the wall on this side a darker color, maybe a slate to make all the white pop. I don't know, maybe. Anyways, the desk has all the same features as the more expensive options out there, but at a fraction of the cost. Check out my assembly video for this desk where I go into a little more detail. I wanted to address my cable management early on in the build. Before I even put the desk together, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. 
Instead of using a compact power strip, I decided on a four foot long strip. This actually helped in spreading out the plugs and decluttering the cables by utilizing as much space under the desk to neatly run the cables through channel strips and up through the built-in grommets. Cable ties and anchors help secure any loose sections. I think it turned out better than I expected. When I'm not standing, I'm sitting in a worksmith ergonomic chair from Amazon. For the price, it provides good support and is better than what I was using before. I did upgrade the casters on this chair to help it roll better as well. I know everyone says that the best investment they ever made was in their chair. I mean, you are sitting in that thing for hours and hours each day. And many of them don't regret spending the money, which is why it will likely be my next big upgrade. At the heart of the setup and the thing powering everything is Apple's 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro. Check out my unboxing video I did for it. I really love how this thing can handle everything I throw at it. With the older MacBook, I constantly had to remind myself to shut down apps I wasn't using to help speed things up. I've had it for about three months now, so I'll probably be coming out with a follow-up review video soon. Stay tuned for that. The MacBook is sitting on top of a homemade desk shelf. Taking a spare shelf from an old bookcase, I screwed on some 4-inch legs I got from Amazon and ended up with this. I really do like it and it means more because I built it. Did I also mention this was a budget setup? Underneath the shelf, I attached a QGM Thunderbolt 4 dock. It does everything I needed to do and so far it's done it well. Attached to the dock via the HDMI port is an LG QN632 inch monitor. I switched back to a single monitor from a dual setup for years. They'd say a dual monitor setup increases productivity, but I found I focus better on a single screen. And I like the extra space it's freed up on the desk. The monitor is mounted on a mounted monitor arm. It's actually a dual monitor arm, but it's currently holding just this single monitor. I initially ordered the single monitor arm, but Amazon kept sending me the dual arm for some reason. I gave up trying to return it and took it as a sign to keep it. It might actually come in handy if I decide to go back to a dual setup. I'm actually looking at a vertical setup for the second monitor. This is the Royal Kludge RK100 mechanical keyboard. I recently switched to a mechanical keyboard from years of using Apple's Magic Keyboard. I'm still getting used to a mechanical keyboard after using a Magic Keyboard for so long. I haven't made any mods to it yet. Next to it is the Logitech MX Anywhere mouse. I prefer a smaller mouse. I do miss the mouse gestures from the Magic Mouse, which is why I'm thinking about combining it with an Apple trackpad. For now, if I need gestures, I'll just combo the Magic Mouse. The light gray felt mat is from Brightstone and I think adds to the aesthetic very well. It's soft, smooth, and sticks to the desk nicely. Audio output is provided by Edifier MR4 Studio Monitors. I love these things. They're great for just listening to music, but also have a studio setting that helps during music production. They also look really good in white. I am using the Uber mic from M Audio for audio input. It can be pretty bassy without adjustments, but a few tweaks and it sounds pretty good. I'm recording with it right now, so let me know what you think. It's mounted on a Rode PSA-1 boom arm. The Uber mic is really heavy, but the PSA-1 handles it nicely and stays put wherever I position it without any adjustments. I was having a hard time with other boom arms, but the PSA-1 just works, so I didn't mind paying a little more for it. For music input, I am using the Arturia Minilab Mark II. Although it's an older machine, it's still very popular and is really good at what it does. Desk lighting is provided by a Vivo light bar. It has a good range of settings and is very stable atop my monitor. A simple IKEA desk lamp illuminates the far corner of the desk. And a Vigium LED light panel is mounted on the other corner. I also ran some RGB LED strips behind the monitor and desk for some added color. I believe a workspace is effective when it accomplishes certain things. The first thing is that it should help you to work efficiently. This involves having the right tools for the job. Now the best doesn't always mean the most expensive, 
but it does help if those tools are of good quality and reliable. So a good amount of research helps to find the best bang for the buck, if you will. A good workspace should also help you focus on the work. A space full of distractions makes it difficult for anyone to concentrate. Everyone is different though. Some find it easier to concentrate with music on, while others prefer silence. Find what helps you to focus and find ways to improve that in your surroundings. Your space should also be comfortable. If you plan on sitting for hours, a good chair definitely helps. If you prefer to stand up every so often, maybe look at getting an adjustable height desk. Everything from the height of your monitor to the brightness of your lighting can contribute or hinder to your comfort and productivity. And lastly, the space should make you want to be there. I wanna be in here for hours. It's my happy place. It motivates me, it energizes me. Surround yourself with the things that you love and it will give your space some warmth. I'm very pleased with what my workspace has developed into, but by no means is it done. Like every good thing, it will always be evolving and improving. I like to see it as a reflection of myself. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my office and desk setup. I'll link as many of the items in the description below. And please, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in more of Rome's things, hit the like, subscribe, and notifications buttons. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'll see you guys later.